Alongside Jeremy Austin in the 2009 champion, Tanya Wagner, Jamie Hakia is down on the floor. My name is Joel Godet. You wanted a competition? You got a competition. All eyes on CrossFit Mayhem Freedom coming into this week. And CrossFit Mayhem Freedom made it interesting through a couple of events, but in the fifth, Rich Froney and company put the pedal to the metal, and they are right back wearing the leader's jersey where you would always expect them to be. Event number six, a little bit of a different challenge, though. A little bit of a new challenge. Absolute challenge, Joel, as well. A lot of moving parts. But we've got two rounds for time. 40 echo by calories for the men as the women do some block handstand push-ups and new position, a new movement we have seen in the past. 30 echo by calories for the female and then back to the males for the handstand push-ups and then they split and do a 500 meter row each while they do a handstand hold, swap over and do it all again. Let's talk about the standard of the handstand push-up and for that we go down to Jamie Hagia and the demo team. These athletes will be doing block handstand push-ups. We have the lovely Allison Scuds, the demo team captain, who will be demonstrating. They will start in a wall walk, getting up to the wall. So these are wall facing. She's gonna get her hands to the block. And then there are gonna be deficits over her head. The women have to come below that line. The men have to go past that second white line, pressing straight up, not using their legs. It is a much different standard. Thank you, Jamie, and it makes it a whole lot interesting in terms of the strategy. It sure does. With any new element, you have to be cautious, but you need confidence in a handstand push-up like that being so challenging. So you need to have cautious confidence on your handstand push-up and then awareness and timing in the rest of the event, especially when you're on the back half of the event where the athletes are going to be in their box doing that static handstand hold. You have to know when it's your turn to kick up on the handstand. Take a look at Orlando Simons here for the first of four heats teams right now that are playing with the cut line. That is what starts to creep its head in here. We will cut the teams almost in half after a competition tomorrow. So these teams need to move their way up into heat two if they want to have a chance of staying alive on Sunday. Only eight teams in this particular heat. Started with 36 at the beginning of competition. Here is CrossFit Trondheim. This maybe falls right into the wheelhouse. Well, Ten this seconds. is the team that Ingrid Twandal with her strict handstand push-ups, that's the movement that got her into this competition, a winning out of strength and depth or just squeaking by to get into the qualifying position. So I don't expect her to have a problem with the handstand push-ups. And because you can share the load with these handstand push-ups, it doesn't have to be, like we saw earlier today, synchronized. Everybody does not have to do the same amount of work. So you rely on your strength in this one. Absolutely, you need strength for this and head not being able to go anywhere near the ground once they do pass that white line. The rep is good. The closer you get your head through to that locked out position, the easier these reps are going to be. What makes this handstand push up so challenging is not just the difficulty of it being wall facing and the, the, how much demand there is in your shoulders and your core, but getting into that position and doing that wall walk and step up and step back, it's very demanding on the shoulders. One more thing to keep in mind, there's no rules to how these have to be divvied up. If one person wants to knock out all of them, she or he can, that's the split and the strategy. And no specifics on where you put your hands either, wherever you can get a good position and meet the requirements of the movement and fatigue already starting to kick in with the echo bike. This is going to be nice and pace if they're communicating well and with a little bit of vision seeing exactly where their team members are and left of screen signaling how many there are to go even though they will have a judge to tell them there's five to go. With a ton of moving parts it's really important to know how many handstand push-ups because you don't want the bike to be what's holding you up here. And I gotta be honest, when you watch Mia Furu for 2150 mount the blocks there, I think the mount is one of the hardest spots and you can see it right here. It's the trust of making that big of a step backwards on your hands. But with a wall walk, you can actually step your hands in however close you want to to the wall. With this, you've got that big jump up to that height. And that two inch deficit is for the females already proving difficult, but head position is going to be the winner today. Now on the bikes, the fellows from Trondheim. Now, Trondheim, as expected right now, is your leader. Well, a very interesting. 
And as you talked about qualifying out of strength and depth, they actually came from a non-qualifying position heading into the final, the sixth event at strength and depth. And it was really because of Ingrid Twandle's proficiency in handstand push-ups, strict handstand push-ups, that the team was able to make the jump they did with a second place finish in that event. The women are now on the bike, however, with Trondheim being in front. So it's 30 calories for the women and now 20 of these block strict handstand push-ups for the men. I know we spoke about timing, so trying to minimize the work to two minutes or less to make sure the transitions are quick. And Trondheim at the moment, getting through those first set of handstands and those echo bike calories, 126, so well in front, but with a little bit more fatigue, we may see that blow out. This event presented by Monster Energy Hydro, the official energy drink of the Noble CrossFit Games. Now, this event is really tricky, though, because even if they can get through this portion of the event, it's a two-round deal here. So they get through it once, they come back. How much more fatigue will they be if a second round through? Because the back half of this, of this event is the handstand holds. So there is so much demand in the static hold coming up and the fatigue that will just compound. 18 minutes of a time cap here, 3.41 here. And the head judge Todd Whitman, the only requirement for the handstand was no cartwheels. So no cartwheeling into position. And making sure they're in a nice, strong position. Getting close to the wall. As there's a lot of people on the floor. Done with their block handstand push-ups. Now waiting for the female competitors to finish up their bike ride. But it's going to be the team in lane number three, CrossFit 80-20. 80-20 right now. Ireland team getting ready to get into position, but they will getting into position That's going to be for the second piece of this event. Seven. And that also is the, the other interesting out. movement, and that is that the rowers are on sliders. You'll see that the women will get into their handstand hold now. Someone must be holding a handstand in order for you to row. And that's what just happened there. 80-20s women's kick down out of a handstand. You've got to rack the rowing paddle and then get back into movement. But these two rowers are linked. It makes it very difficult because you must row in sync. Trying to get your communication is getting pretty loud in here right now. And trying to communicate with your partner, ensuring that all four feet are off the ground at one particular point to get a smooth transition and the split hold and stack position of that shoulder girdle. And that is exactly what the boys on the rower are wanting. What you've got to do is talk and communicate. You need to say, and in the demo this morning, James Sprague from the demo team would count out loud as he did the description with Griffin Raleigh. You would hear, three, two, one, I'm coming down, because if someone can pick up while you're picking down, your partners can continue to row uninhibited. And Trondheim is doing a great job with that. They are communicating. They're, they're timing that well. For the second event of the event, number six. But the fatigue does build. Up on the top of your screen, 80-20 has got things figured out now for their ladies, but they had a bunch of mishaps early on where their men kept having to stop that rower. And you saw they just had another one right there. But that is kind of what it should look like as you kick up and down. You just want to be careful not to play with that line too close. Now, Tony, you and I had a bit of a play around with the sliders just before this event. It was a lot easier for me at the back to see the stroke you were doing and the position and timing of your stroke. So it must be a lot harder for the person in front because they're going to take a full brunt of the load if their timing is off. And these sliders are a great representation for what it feels like out on the water. And we're using those. We spoke to some of the guys from Concept2 earlier. And this is where on, on land training, if you can't get on the water, to help people with their timing so that you can be doing the work and sharing the workload because that tempo and timing is so important. 
who were working in the role with him. Well, Greg Hammond didn't mention them. These have been around for about 20 years. And it's the first time we've seen them in an event here. So people just haven't taken the opportunity to use them. They're, they're, it was awesome. It was really awesome rowing with you. Uh, we can get some sliders back across at Apex, everybody. So head over to Concept 2's website. <laughs> it was way more awesome for me, let me tell you. <laughs> Two. Got 11 minutes left in the event. 80 20 still leads the way. And the biggest thing, like we said, is that awareness. For the rowers, you're not really paying attention so much to your other athletes doing the handstand holds. It's about just making sure you're staying in sync, like Jeremy and I were just talking about, and just listening to your judge. When they say stop or when they say row, that's what you're listening for. But the athletes are doing the handstand holds here. That non-verbal communication is really important. I like how some of the guys are kicking up, almost being like dictating, I'm ready to go, you can come down. Keep in mind, this is a 500 meter row. The quicker you row, the less time you're holding the handstand. So everything here is predicated on your rowing speed and efficiency to relieve those doing the handstand. Joel, you mentioned it before with James Sprague from the demo team trying to communicate. Think about your head position while you're upside down, trying to hold that stable position and breathe at the same time and then communicate on how you're traveling. That's really difficult. Some athletes having no trouble with this handstand hold whatsoever. The handstand hold came into play in competition back in 2020 on one of the divisions or one of the uh, stages to the CrossFit game when we were online. That was the first time we saw that. So a lot of people have been practicing, have been able to do that, but having your partner so close and someone else kicking up like that, Back to the as you, makes a big difference. As you look across the field right here, for those teams that are on the rowers, the teams that have their women rowing are in front. Men are rowing, you are still behind. But we'll start to see some people going back to the bikes because this is two complete rounds of what you're watching on the floor. From the right, all the way to the left. So those teams that are now onto the bikes are on to round two with about half of the time remaining before the cap hits. Position, 18 minute time capped event. The men here will bike 40 Echo Cows while the women are going through these 15 block deficit handstand push ups. They will then switch. New standard of handstand push up and really challenging these athletes. We've seen a number of different Events, strength, speed, power. Now we need some finesse and positioning for two rounds. I don't think the echo bar calorie is going to be that much of a drama for the guys, but the it's going to come down to the handstand push-ups and then back for the row. We're trying to finish fast when you're trying to synchronize as well. Talk to Adrian Bosman, who programmed the CrossFit Games this year, and when he detailed this standard to us, he said, Adrian, where did you come up with this? And you've got to remember that Adrian Bosman has a heavy gymnastics background, and he said, I have been wanting to program these for such a long time, came across them in his travels in Asia. And he said, this is something that I've seen done, I've seen it part of people's exercise regimens, and it's an advancement of the test and a continued test of the skills for all of these athletes at now this level. Handstand push-ups have been around forever, and there's only so much we can do with them, so people have gotten so strong and proficient in them. So taking it to the next level, it, was a, it is time, strict, deficit. We brought in the wall walks the other year, and now as we together. Even in that uh, discussion we had with Boz, it was, we're gonna test these athletes, and some of these teams may not finish these events because they are testing the water to see what capabilities these athletes have and see how quickly they can adapt. Not everyone finishes the L1. Not everyone finishes the SAT. A test is a test. The bar even. It's just, it's opportunities to get stuck and refine where you're gonna train and how hard where you need to work for the following year. I'm actually just, just see this second half, the speed difference on these handstand push-ups for Trondheim. This is Sarpsburg right here that we're looking at. One of the other Norwegian teams, Trondheim, Oslo Purple Red, Oslo Navy Blue, four teams from that country represent 10% of the teams in the field. Actually, 
fists gripping over the ballistic block there. Squeezing on with your fingertips, which is a little bit of a different position, similar to parallettes where you can squeeze around around. It's a little different than that flat position of your hands. Core stability. Another factor goes into this handstand push-up position. The girl's actually waiting for the guys on the echo bike, so the boy's going to have to pick up their game a little. Back to 80-20 here. It's Lewis Pearson, and then doing the handstands is Jim Neal. 80-20 is a cool gym. With that team qualifying to the games, they have now had somebody qualify to the CrossFit Games out of 80-20 in Ported Down, Northern Ireland in every single division. Teenage, Masters, Team, Elite, Adaptive. Somebody from that gym in Ported Down, Northern Ireland has been here in any and every division. Really cool. <laughs> Lewis is feeling the brunt here. Tap back in Jim Neal, who are competing with Emma Willis and Kerry Hewitt. Kerry's a doctor, Jim is also a medical professional. And you can see the tape on his left leg there as he was doing those handstand push-ups. He's competing with a great tear of his ankle. He is fighting through this. Good news he told us, he's a PT, they've got a doctor, anything goes wrong, he's good. Now foot position, the important part as well, there's no actual requirement for the foot position coming up the wall as there has been in the past with standards for the open quarterfinals. So trying to get those feet inside those hands, imperative, but making sure that head comes through and the more you fatigue, the more the head sits out there. In gymnastics, the tighter you are, the lighter you are, keeping your body together, keeping that core together, and it's so demanding when your head is moving forward like that. And Louis just having a bit of drama on the left, keeping that head in position. He's probably working harder than he needs to. Here's the thing, you know, you want to probably do singles in this, but the demand of getting back in that position, uh -huh. while you're up there, you might as well go for two because it takes so much time for the transitions. But that's the, the options you have to weigh. You don't want to do one wall walk into one yeah, right. push pushup. Four minutes left to go in the cap here. Progressions as well for this. Not able to do this standard. There's other standards. You can get your feet on a box. You can get your knees on a box. You know, push up. Think about it. We start ours at the gym with a tripod push up or tri tripod position, and that is that forward position. Um, and a lot of times you see we'll go strict dumbbell press, but this position more similarly mimics the handstand position and it, it demanding the same requirement of the muscles, your upper traps. That is lane number so now back to the rowing here for 80-20. Back in the saddle on the concept to her. 21-50 and 80-20 are your leaders Thompson right now. They're going to be joined by Trondheim. The, the field catching up here with now three minutes on. left to go. The women are on the handstand hold. The men are rowing 500 lane meters. Well, now technically together because they're linked together, but each one is rowing 500 meters. Looking to try and close out this event. The judge tapping you on the shoulder to tell you to stop rowing is not a good thing. Make your partners are the not synchronizing with the handstand hold. Of communication. And moving around on that handstand position, very fatiguing, but might be the way you can balance. The other, the other oh, that's what you want to see. The nice stacked position of those shoulders, head in a nice position. Yeah, the picture's not frozen on the right side here. <laughs> that is live. It is a split position for legs as well. That's balancing out the center of mass. And that's a great, great transition. transition. Wow. Great transition. Beautiful to say that they're at the end portion of this event to still have the strength, the stability to stay in place like that. It does look a little bit better here than when they demoed it in the athlete warm-up area. I, I thought it'd be a little more claustrophobic having to kick up that close to my partner, but that has not been an issue here in heat one with two minutes to go. Four by four boxing, these athletes are just demonstrating their great control of their bodies. John, you've got to think with that split position as well. That front foot is going well into that other box. So as you kick up, you're going to kick your teammates. But seeing the handstand hold, the static handstand hold in the 2020 
huge. Qualified to the CrossFit very, Games. Very much like a statue to hang and take long enough for them to wrap And roughly, up. if you think the two minute row for 500 meters, transition. two minutes is a the long time to be holding, especially squat. when you have we'll got that over. accumulated fatigue from those handstand push ups. The slider row. And remember, 2020, it had to be unbroken, but yes. Katrin won the static handstand hold. It was well less than two minutes. But how many people went and practiced after that? <laughs> Every comes out and that was it. What can I do? Everybody should have. In a row as well. One minute left to go. 50 seconds now left to go here in the opening heat. Less than a minute, teams coming up on them. 45 seconds. Here's 80-20's transition on the left of your screen. Good communication. It was great on the first one. Teammates across the way, ladies and gentlemen, let's give these teams one more boost. With now look at this in the back. Remaining. Solid hold. Waiting until they needed the help. Good communication. Of the day, Larry. Been a long few days already. Dylan still got two more to go after this. 15 seconds. 15 seconds left to go here in the opening heat. Makes Not going to see a finisher, but what will be end. the baseline heading into heat number two? Up in three, two, one. <laughs> Big round of applause for all your teams here in heat number one, event number six, handstand machine. Good work by the Europeans here in heat number one. The Irish team from 8020, the Scandinavians. Also performing well. And it's going to be Trondheim that comes away with that heat one victory. Sometimes we know what we're talking about. Cap plus one. Oh, so Two close. rep difference. Yeah, so, so close. Wow. To <laughs> well, we talked about Ingrid Twandel and her strict handstand push-up prowess. She, Eric Vaudal, Var Thurman Moe, Lars Rudy, able to pick up a heat victory, which are hard to come by at the CrossFit Games. When you think about a two minute transition for each movement, they were very close to getting that spot on. Talk about the event again as we reset here for heat number two. This is handstand machine, Jeremy. Two rounds for time, 40 echo bike calories for the men to start things off while the females do the new block handstand push-ups. Then they'll switch in, the females will do 30 echo bike calories and 20, the gentlemen will do 20 block handstand push-ups. Then they'll split, they'll go and do a handstand hold and a 500 meter row each. And the new concept two sliders seen for the first time. And your recipe for success for this is going to be cautiously confident on those handstand push-ups because we have the handstand holds in the back half of the event, as well as your awareness and timing, good communication, all the good things you need for any team event. A couple of veteran teams here in this heat. CrossFit West Chase competed at these CrossFit Games just a year ago, so did CrossFit Rhapsody. Those two teams are right next to each other in lanes four and five. Oslo Purple Red had a heat victory yesterday in the run, the fast event. That was complemented by the strong event outside yesterday. But our eyes are in lane one. The team from Spain, CrossFit Zerouts. Dinka Van Overveld competed on a different team at the games last year, and the guy that he calls himself Mr. Weak, Alex Sagasti. Strength, not his strong suit, he's stronger than he gives himself credit for, but body weight movements, that's where he shines. He wants to go hit that handstand push-up block. Absolutely, and the number one seeds out of the European qualifiers 2021 and weren't able to progress due to COVID issues. So excited to see what the routes can do. Anna Sagasti on the left there, also competed at these games as an individual in 2019. And there they go, folks. A lot of veteran experience Our as we get underway here in heat number two with an 18 minute time cap. Six. Event six for Just the teams here at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Friday afternoon festivities here. 
The men start on the Echo Bike, 40 cows, while the women go through 15 of these deficit block handstand push-ups. It is a two-inch deficit, and you can see that white line. The top of your head must break the top of the white tape. Now, for the men, it must break the bottom of the white tape. And watch the cranking of the necks, because if you crank your neck, that takes away from the depth of your push-up. If you keep your neck straight, that adds to the depth of your push-up. And that is all about your core stability, being able to maintain that body position. The tighter you are, the stronger you are in your midline, the more you can keep that head neutral. Take a look at Mayhem Justice here. One of the three Mayhem teams competing out of Cookville, Tennessee. That head position, really important. The quicker you get your head position right underneath your torso, the easier this movement is going to be. Once fatigue kicks in, that neck and that head position just seems to stick out just that little bit more. Now, arm position is an important thing to talk about as well. Athletes can put their hands wherever they want to. Normally, we've got a box for our hands to go inside, but at this stage, we can go wherever we want. Where do you put them? For me, I'm going probably a little bit wider than I'd normally do a handstand push-up, but maybe grip the side of the block to be able to propel myself up the wall. I, I like to go corners. I like to go, I'd probably go corners just to be able to have more torque in my shoulders as I line them up. They would have been able to sprint across that finish line, so I'm excited to see what these Not to state the obvious, these are two. clearly more strenuous than a typical handstand push-up, and I think we switch. saw them maybe a little bit more devastating in Heat 1 than you might have thought, or maybe than the athletes three. expected. Well, and what's so challenging is when you are touching your head to the ground, you have that feedback, you know where you are, but just the first couple reps with the adrenaline kicking in of the event is really hard for these athletes probably to know exactly where you are. You don't want to go lower than you need to, but it's really hard. No, we don't want a, a no rep either. And I think you made the, the point of when you touch your head to the ground, typically in a handstand push up, even a deficit handstand push up, you cannot do that here. That is a no rep. So you are suspended in the air throughout the entirety of your handstand push ups. That puts an incredible amount of strain and strength in your shoulders. This event is presented by Monster Energy Hydro. That is the official energy drink of the 2022 No More CrossFit Games. How much effort it's it takes just to get up into that inverted position. Doing a magnificent well. job right now no and more. getting stacked. Now we talk about stack position. We go back to our level one for our nine foundational movements. We've got our shoulder press, then we go into our push press, push jerk. And then we move on to our position upside down where we can support our body weight in a safe position. And then we progress, and the progression for the handstand push-up has got harder. The difficulty even more the more years we get into the CrossFit Games. Let's see what Adrian Bosman has in store next for these teams, but that is just magnificent. Solid body position. He's keeping his legs together. He has complete control of his body. It's Alexander Sagasti. Just good for him to get to the games. In 2019, he had some visa issues. The nerves gave him an ulcer. He had a hip injury that he aggravated right before he got to the games. He was not in a great physical shape. Still made it through first cut, but he said event two wrecked him. So to get a chance to come back here, he was hyped. Well, he definitely won't need his hips in this one if he keeps going like that. <laughs> hey, what you, what, what, what give it, take it away, or okay, vice versa, like right? That. The shoulders are stronger. <laughs> done with the handstand push-ups before their female counterparts are done on the bike. And Zarout's now advancing to the rowing and the handstand hold. Both athletes rowing, linked on these sliders. It'll mimic just like rowing on water, just like you're in a crew boat. You must stop rowing and re-rack the paddle if the feet come down from one of your female partners. Communication. communication key on the left side Verbal of your screen. And non Gotta have good Someone must be in the air at all times. Already some early no reps. And the hard part, if you aren't used to maintaining yourself within that box, is that you're, sometimes your partner has their legs kicked over and you don't want to kick them and knock them over. You've got a handstand walk. People are, are used to doing a position of support, but you're going to a target. Now you're sitting on one spot and you've got a box, you've got restrictions. And no reps now really starting to creep in. So getting in position and being able to communicate with your partner at the same time proving very difficult for a number of these teams. Good transition there on the left side of your screen with Yonatanta kicking down. 
Inky Van Overveld kicking back up. Same thing, you just saw it again right there. Zarauts has this locked in. They are looking really sharp. Ninka Van Overveld was an addition to that team late. Boy, Hanamoya was actually competing with them in the offseason. They needed a, a replacement. They DM'd everyone in Europe. They found Ninka Van Overveld. She came with them to the Madrid CrossFit Championship. They loved the chemistry. Only one on the team that doesn't speak Spanish. So Alexander Sagasti does the translation for them. That's a lot of DMs. Everyone in Europe. <laughs> wow. They're expanding in Europe. They're loving CrossFit in Europe. <laughs> The only requirement was you cannot have your hands down on the floor waiting to do a kick up. So while they're kind of watching and listening, they're able to be in a hinge position, but they cannot be touching the floor. We talk about communication within the team. The judges working just as hard with their communication. Oh yeah. Telling the athletes to stop rolling once the athletes aren't getting that transition nailed. Smooth that time. A little bit of a bend in the elbow and shoulder. So whatever the support you need to do. Now balance on your hands important. We know that the fingers playing an important role in gripping the floor and keeping that arm well and truly planted. But if handstand push-ups and this is your if this is your weaker movement, then obviously they're gonna be it's gonna be taxed coming into this hold. And you can stay within that box. So for some people, that static hold is so demand the isometric. And for some people, they'll dance a little bit. Oh, had a little bobble here off screen. It is close, like you said, though, Jeremy. It's not as much when they're upside down as when they come down in which direction they fall. And a number of shoulder taps that you can do in that position, whether or not you're supporting on the wall, your feet are on a box. This is mimicking that perfectly. Just trying to get those hands in the position, judges working overtime. Then you're looking at Kilo 2 on the right side of your screen, Zarouts on the left side of your screen. Zarouts has actually fallen from the ranks of the top three at the moment. Mayhem Justice very yeomanly working their way up here into a tie in first place. 43 reps on each side. We spoke about this before with the slider, Tanya, and you and I jumping on. You were up the front, I was at the back. So you setting the pace, but at the back, I was having to work my stroke length and power off yours. And i tell you what, when we did get out of sync deliberately, it was all over the place. As soon as you stop, it's so hard to get yourself back in that position and under the pressure of needing to push or want to go a little faster together, we had to communicate that. And at 45 calories, you are released, or 45 reps, you have hit the appropriate number of meters on the roll to run back to the bike and start the second round through. So the male athletes will now begin another 40 cals on the echo bike while the females tackle these 15 deficit block handstand push-ups. A much faster heat already than heat one. It's about 20 seconds difference. So approaching that halfway mark for the time cap. 18 minutes. Nordic on the left side of your screen. Kilo two on the right side of your screen. Nordic is a repeat team from these games last season. Began today's competition in 22nd place. Finished ninth last year. They do have some returning athletes from that team, including Antonia Falt-Kolinski, who's the team's captain. The two men are Alex Alebro and Eric Bjork Rubio. Mayhem Justice now in first place for the first time. Second time through here. We're at the top of the list with the 40 cows and the 15 push-ups. Event number six for the team's hand stand machine. You're not kidding. So one round complete already, but 40 echo bike cows for the men. 15 
block handstand push-ups, the new standard for the females. And they will go back and swap. The females will do 30 echo by calories. The men, 20 block handstand push-ups. And then head on to the concept two slide rowers. While your other gender pairing is doing a handstand hold. So 500 meters required from both pairs. And it's also 40 cows, so those don't necessarily happen in sync. But our time to beat is that cap plus one set by CrossFit Trondheim. And the way the cap works is for, if you get time cap, every 50 meters completed on the rower by the pair equals one rep. I know the sliders are linked together. Can you imagine the echo bikes linked together? So if you're struggling, your partner has to take over and do more work. I'm trying to figure out how that would work. I, I would love that. Sounds horrible. <laughs> I don't like them when they're separate. <laughs> I said this again in the first heat. I still think the hardest part of this movement, watch as Seth Stovall moves into this position, that trust to pull that second hand up onto the block. Having the shoulder strength, having your body awareness. I like the fact how they're not rushing to get into position. The demo team in the briefing earlier and on the floor here, taking plenty of time. So hopefully these teams have taken notice. And as that fatigue kicks in, oh, that's a great position. Ben Davidson there. That one not so good, just because that head started to tilt down towards the end of the arena and away from his body. The quicker you can get that position of your head or your face close to that plexiglass. Beautiful position now. Mayhem Justice doing very well, getting that head below that line three and a half inches. It's smart. He did, uh, Seth Stowell did a six rep the first time there, about three. And all he needs is Ben Davidson to come in and just give a little breather. Did you see the save? Ben Davidson's left leg came off the plexiglass. <laughs> and he did a great job to recover. He's a great individual athlete. His teammates joked, they said if you looked at him, he didn't look like he would be here, but he is sneaky fit. He actually competed in the individual quarterfinals and would have been a backfill to individual semifinals had he chosen to go that route. The men are holding strong right here, and I'm really proud because it's really their ladies, and it's their ladies' ability, Aniston Sudoff, the gymnast, she has been known to do 50 unbroken handstand push-ups. This is her ability to shine and just help the team out. So if the men can kind of hang on here and do their part, they're looking great. Think about if you're known to do 50 unbroken handstand push-ups. Not that you did it once, but it's like, oh yeah, Aniston, the one who does the 50 unbroken handstand push-ups. Nordic on the move, all by the lonesome, top of the screen. Oslo purple, red for the first time in this heat we'll talk about. They've joined in lane three, may have just as bottom of screen. They are now on to their second round of rowing. This is 500 meters for the men. They can only row while one of their women has their feet up in the air for a freestanding handstand hold. Nordic, top of your screen, holding tight. Aniston, suit off the bottom of your screen, orange shoes. For Mayhem Justice, here they are. This is the communication, this is the awareness. Teammates need to take over before it's too late. Good job by Jessica Nice Kalasia transition there. there. Time cap's coming up in about four minutes' time. We're going to get some finishers here in Heat 2. We sure are, and synchronization of this row. Nordic doing a wonderful job. And a position that you couldn't see, Tanya, when we were on the slide rower. If you watch the scapulas, back of the shoulders of the athlete in front, you can actually pace the strength of your ball and your timing of your row. Greg Hammond said if you can watch the scapulas there and you can see when they stay tight, and they start to engage, that's when the back athlete needs to start their pool. And really, Jeremy, you and I, 
we were able to get that together. It wasn't that hard. It really was just the startup. And so that's why it's punishing if they have any stops in this one. So otherwise, rowing together wasn't as bad as what it may appear. The start is, though. The length of the stroke as well is really important. And we get our first switch. The men now to the handstand hold for Nordic. The women onto their 500 meter row. And they have three minutes to do it. Nordic is going to finish. The question is going to be how quickly. Michaela Norman rowing in the back and Twania Felt Kotolinski rowing in front. You say two minutes for a rough 500 meter row. Nordic have got so much time and they can really push this row. I wasn't rowing it that hard, Tanya, on yours. I was rowing at about a 146, and it was a fairly comfortable pace to be rowing at. But the ladies here will be looking at roughly 145 to 150 to finish this out with a little bit of fatigue. Mayhem Justice also now rowing with their women. So too is Oslo Purple Red. So three teams right now are on their final set of movements. Collision in the front, Sudhoff in the back there. They're able to unrack those paddles and row again with Ben Davidson having kicked up into a handstand. And you can see the check of the clock and the check of the leaderboard by Collision. Veteran move for the most veteran member of the youngest team in the field. That's Mayhem Justice. 23 years on average. Purple Red technically is the lead right now. A costly kick down by Stovall at the bottom of the screen. Davidson drops out, Stovall up into the sky. 90 seconds, 80 seconds now left before the time cap. You can see Ben Davidson's shirt tucked into his pants. It's not because he doesn't want to show his abs off. It's to keep his shirt out of his eyes. There's the claustrophobia. Two Mayhem athletes nearly kicked into each other. Nordix display 143, exactly where I was expecting it to be. 20 cows left here, Jeremy, so they've got plenty of time. They're going to jump right off. Those cows flew. And with almost a minute of time left, CrossFit Nordic. That's their first heat win of the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. And the first team to finish this event. It came down to those handstand holds. They were great. Nice little race there, little run to the finish. Oslo Purple Red came out of nowhere on the back half. That second round, they left enough in the tank. Now, Kent Mayhem Justice finish. 20 seconds left to go. Davidson and Stovall struggling on the handstand. Stovall's got to kick up, then kicks down. You've got to re-rack. 10 seconds left. Mayhem Justice is not going to be able to finish. They finish the work. They don't get across the line. Same that happened with Zaroutz. Zaroutz, yeah. And I think they're going to give Zaroutz the finish. At least they did on the scoreboard on screen. We'll see what the official call is. Nope, they capped him on the spot. Zaroutz and Mayhem Justice. Zaroutz and Mayhem Justice. Right there. <laughs> Move the camera to the side. Ben knows a thing or two about camera work. It's, it's what he does for a living. This is my good side. <laughs> Four teams complete the work. Two teams finish the heat. Overall standings on the team side coming into event number six. Kind of where you thought they'd be, right? Mayhem Freedom, the defending champions. 2021, 2019, 2018, 2016, 2015. Rich Froning looking for his 10th career championship. Invictus not far off pace. Only problem is that this event falls right into the wheelhouse of Mayhem Freedom. They will be in the next heat still. This is heat three on handstand machine. Two rounds of time, 40 echo bike calories for the men, 15 block handstand push-ups, the new standard for the women. Women will go back to the echo bike for 30 calories, the men back to the handstands for 20 handstand push-ups. They will split 500 meter row while the other gender pairing do the handstand hold, freestanding handstand hold, and then they will switch back. And two rounds for time, and we've got 18 minutes on our time cap. And the recipe for success for these 
Movement is going to be cautiously confident on those handstand push-ups. Commit to your attempts, but make sure that if you're feeling the fatigue, get off your hands and let your partner do some work. And awareness and timing goes a long way on the handstand holds so that your, your other partners don't have to be stopping on those rowers. Nine teams in this field. OBA had a good morning. Tremendous job on the muscle pig out at North Park. Bumped them back into heat three from having fallen into the first half of heats. Greater Heights strength team. We'll see if that translates onto the gymnastics side today. But in lane one, it is EXF. One of the teams from down in Oceana who, Jeremy, you think are gonna crush this thing. Well, Christy and Brian, we know how good they are, but Moses on screen, his gymnastics ability is absolutely outstanding. The big unit, Henry Carlisle to the left of the screen. Got some work to do. There's CrossFit overtake Team Density, who just came flying late in the event. Muscle Pig this morning at the North Park. Marco Coppola has been in the games before. He's the captain of that team. Finished a spot out from the games in qualification last year. Rededicated themselves, and here they are in 22. Overtake did have a great Muscle Pig event. It's a seventh in that one. And they also took fifth in strong. This event starts on the Echo Bike for the men. 40 cows here and the 15 block handstand push-ups. Kelsey Gill just took a no round. And you can see just the crank of the neck to check with the judge. Was I good there? I'm sure the judge is going to tell you straight out if you're not meeting requirements. But that head position sitting way out until the very last second, that's a lot of strain to deal with. So we're going to try and get that face as close as you can to the plexiglass just to make this movement even more efficient and effective. Ashley Wozni is the youngest of this crew. She's only 24 years of age. Everyone else for OBA is 31. Pushes the tempo for them. Now requirement just for the toes to be able to hit the plexiglass once the movement has finished. So no feet on the wall per se. So no walking up the wall. And the strain already. And I'd be surprised if she does another one. And the girls from EXF already right of screen. They're already done. Christy Brishett would have taken most of that brunt and they are waiting for the guys to finish. Blistering speed, waiting for their men. Just letting them get a little recovery in the shoulders. Harry Carlisle left, Moses Patello has the mullet on the right. Moses is the owner of the gym. And now they'll switch it out. The guys will have 20 of these block deficit handstand push-ups. It'll be 30 cows for the women on the bike. At the Torian Pro, the EXF guys would have probably stayed at home because most of them are very close <laughs> to Brisbane. So one of the benefits, but way on the other side of the world now. And proving just why they were one of the qualifiers. This event presented by Monster Energy Hydro, the official energy drink of the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Greater Heights is your leader right now. Give you another look at OBA with Nicholas Hecht on the push-ups. The team from Philadelphia is a rep off pace. Strong team, looking to make a name out here. A lot of experience on their team. Nick's first time in the games, though. And for Joey Tortora, he's back at the games. He actually quit CrossFit doing this movement in the middle of 20.3 in the open. He was just burned out. He kicked down off the wall. His judge said, you can keep going. He said, I'm done. She said, with the workout, he said, with CrossFit. Back at it, back at the games, pushing EXF here in event six. Henry Carlisle struggling a little to get that big frame upside down. He has got a good lookout, lockout position. That head sticking out just a little bit too far. And that pause at the top, crucial seconds ticking away. That some of that form you're going to give up a little bit, Jeremy. Just like we said, we don't want you don't want to come down and do singles here. Too much effort to come down after one rep, but you want to hold on a little bit longer. You're going to sacrifice some of that form, unfortunately, and efficiency. Moses Patello getting through his sets pretty easily. He's getting way more depth than he needs to. 
and that's what we spoke about. They're not able to see where they're, they really are coming down. So if you're a good teammate, you can be there telling them you don't need to come down so far. But there are different spots within a movement when you go through a range of motion that just are easier to kind of stop and get some of that re uh, muscle reflex. Greater Heights onto their second grouping of movements here. Head to the rower and the handstand hold. They'll be joined by EXF. EXF. Kolesnikov team has also moved on to their second grouping of movements. So too has OBA. So four teams are on to the rowing and the handstand hold. Greater Heights doing very well in the lift event, event number two yesterday. And the power and strength required, not just to pull this rower, but be able to hold a handstand position. Jordan Cook in the back, Duncan Milady in the front. So much strength, so much power. And just a quick look over the shoulder. The transitions for the ladies has been very good so far. Just ensuring that one of your team members has got hands on the floor and feet are in the air before the other one kicks down. Another great transition. I would hope that's the case for Greater Heights. Emily Tanner was a collegiate acro tumbler. So this is like wheelhouse central right now for the team from Texas. EXF on left of screen. Henry Carlisle very good on the row, very strong. So he may be doing a little bit more work and easing it off for Moses at the front. Moses getting through those reps of the handstands a lot easier. How much harder is the work if you're linked to another rower and you're really doing the pulling for both machines? Well, 500 required on both rowers anyway. But, but just in terms of the effort, if I've got to, if I've got to pull for you a little bit. Well, Tanya, I was on it. I was like carrying her the entire way. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was the opposite. Tanya was carrying me the whole way. No, it, but it's not like you're pulling the entire weight. It just pulls you back from your stroke, so it affects more of your stroke and it just makes you, it causes you to use a little more effort than what you normally would to get your meters. 12 minutes to go. 18 minute time cap on this event. Had two teams finish and cross the finish line in the last team. Four teams finished. They've got to go through all of this work twice. So once these teams are done rowing and handstand holding, they'll go all the way back to the beginning. Lesnikov team. And look at that communication. Oh, a lot of communication. Yeah, good work. That was nice. They were great in the lift event as well yesterday. Getting a ninth position. That's Adam Manti and Johan Van Ziel across the urban. Ivan Kukartsev, hands on knees. Yushkin is the one trying to hold the handstand, and now they'll have to rack their paddles on the rower back of screen. Joel, that's a big frame to be holding up to. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Greater Heights still setting the tempo. Kolesnikov has come from behind here in second. The box still lurking. Remember, this is only round one. They do have to go through this again. There already looks to be, though, some fatigue from this and these guys. Uh, this is a much faster pace than the other heats as well. So uh, they're, they're rushing, but I hope they're not going too fast that they get caught up when they go come back to the handstand push up. You mentioned it in the previous couple of the heats. It's important to get that row done as quick as you can so the handstand hold isn't as fatiguing on your other partners. That's almost a minute faster than the previous heat, which was 30 seconds faster than the first heat. That at least one team has gotten back to the bikes here to begin their second round. It's Greater Heights Ascend, the first ones to keep going. They're also joined by EXF, lanes one and two. Quite prophetic there. Open box all the way at the bottom of the screen. They're back at it. Kelsey Keel will hit the handstand push-ups off the block. Okay, 
Easy position for EXF. Girls doing exceptionally well and resting just a little bit longer. Such great control. Christy Hollard. Now Bryony Chalice. Bryony Chalice, her prowess with a barbell is exceptional, but her gymnastics almost as good. You know what's interesting is you guys talked earlier about you would want wider hand positioning, and it's really up to the athletes here. But both Bryony and Christy have gone with a much more narrow stance than we've seen from many of the athletes. Well, if you think about one of the 10 general physical skills of CrossFit, is that flexibility. If you've got that flexibility in your shoulders to get closer to a stronger position of support, you're going to go to it every time. Look do, how narrow that is. I do not have that amount of flexibility. Christy looking great upside down. And again, finishing early. Just waiting for the guys to finish their 40 cows. Same thing for greater heights on the right. What's that split, Jeremy? 122 for Bryony and Christy from EXF. Fastest handstand push-up split the first round was in a minute three for EXF. That's not a bad split at all for round two. Absolutely not. Handstand Machine is team event number six. Into the second round of our 40 Echo Bike Calories for the men, 15 block handstand push-ups for the women. The swap. Women back to the Echo Bike for 30 cows, the men for 20 handstand push-up, and then back for the final 500 meter row each. While the other gender pairing is holding a handstand position and freestanding at that. And it was Nordic from the, uh, from the previous heat heat too that set this time to beat at 17 minutes and nine seconds. The guys have 20 of these block handstand push-ups. Head must break the entirety of the white line. The women just had to break the top of it. The guys have to break the bottom line. It's a three and a half inch deficit. Henry going way deeper than he needs to. If I was Moses, I'd be yelling at him going, buddy, calm your farm a little. Not too deep. I would have said the same thing. Calm your farm. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. You can be talking with your female athletes on the bikes because you don't need to be crushing it. You don't need to do more reps than you have to for time-wise. Some of these men were waiting for their ladies the last time. Doesn't look like the ladies are going that much faster. On those bikes, you're not going to make up all this ground time-wise. So they really should keep that communication up. Check in and see where they're at. I'm so excited for you to go back to CrossFit Apex and coach a class and tell the entire group to calm their farm. <laughs> in that accent. <laughs> EXF Greater Heights still going to town here. OBA has fallen off pace. We showed you overtake team density earlier. They're now in third. Here's what happened. There's no rep here. Ashley Wozni was struggling there and coming out of that, it's not going to look pretty, but that was the no rep that kind of set her back. Interesting did, dismount. Yeah, she did the worm after the team qualified at the Granite Games and kind of did it again there, but not quite as intentionally. The ballistic block left a little bit less room for her. Now they're checking in and seeing. What time they have, there's five to go for EXF. Hands in the air. Keeping in mind that the first rows for most of these teams in the two minute ballpark. So you're going to have to row twice. And that's typical, you figure, for a 500 meter row, typically that would be a little bit faster in competition, but those sliders are just causing a little bit more uh, pacing. You're gonna slow down just a little bit to keep yourself together. The fastest row was 151 from OBA, the slowest was 242 from KT. EXF is the first to advance back to their round of rowing in round two. And they've got zero company. EXF began the day in 15th place. Look at these ladies. Beautiful communication, great control and strength, inverted. The men are grinding it out. 
And it's almost calculated. It's the walk back and forth. So you're not just trying to stay in position statically. There's some movement there to stay active. Well, Chrissy's very good gymnastically, and she knows exactly what she has to do. Two different techniques, the bent leg versus the briny chalice, straight leg position. Almost like an inverted star jump. What do you call them over here? Jumping jacks or something? Star jump? Star, star jumps and farm bonus. Calm the farm. Calm the farm. <laughs> but two completely different techniques and both are very effective. This is a great hold from Briny. And looking straight at that three-point position you spoke about earlier, Tanya. EXF really just tackling this so nice. And the men really are grinding through, keeping their strokes short. They're driving through their legs. It's a great example of how to row. If you're back at your affiliate, everybody likes to do the full oh, lead back and the mess. pull the paddle as high. Yes. Nice short, right to your stern. Keeping your hips back, getting in a really good catch position is huge. That's efficient, that's strong. <laughs> Moses taking a short break, but he's done. So is Henry. He's taking a longer break, actually. And the girls now swapping in, and they've got a little bit of time, but not much to that time. At 17.09, our time to beat. I mean, you've got to... Oh, the girls have got to go. You're at the end of an event here, but you can hold a 2.05 pace here and get yourself across that line and have the new time to beat. And with EXF, the girls are much better handstand hold than Moses and Henry, so they want to be rowing a lot faster to minimize the fatigue on the arms. Henry getting those steps with those hands a little bit bigger, and they just don't want to come down. And you have to stay not only in the box, but off the blue tape. So a couple of really good saves in that hold. Jeremy, I thought where the women were fantastic as well as the time to beat again is 17.09, was kicking down before they needed to. The transition points of before you hit that failure, kick up so that you can maintain the rowing pace going on the other side. The quick transitions now, fatigue really starting to kick in for EXF. And Henry, as you mentioned, Joel, Another couple of saves, and he's got a big frame. 151. We'll go with the 500 on that counter. It looked like they came down there. The ladies had to. That just stopped momentarily on the row. But then changes now between Moses and Henry are very quick. And not really, really what. Now his feet came girls. down. That should have been a stop again there. Should have been. There have been a couple. I don't. That should, the ladies should have been re-racking, hooking in their handles right and there pausing. Too. And there. Time to beat is 17.09 though. EXF still in front. And they seek to finish up. Let's see if they can do it. We're at 16.50. As they hit the 500 meter mark, can they get across? We get the, the switch line, for greater heights as EXF yes, finishes 1709, the time to beat. It has been beaten. Chip timers on the women. So 1703 for EXF now out in front. It's been beaten. They worked hard, but I don't know about that standard there. That was not how it was supposed to be for the penalty for the row. We'll have to see what happens with that. Now we still have time before the cap comes in. 32 seconds remaining. We're going to get another finish. Overtake, Team Density, great Friday. I'm sure they're the two teams we highlighted coming into this too. No, we're doing pretty well with that today. <laughs> Overtake really did, just like we saw earlier today, calm, composed. They know how to execute these workouts. Events. Only four teams, four teams cross the finish line through the first three heats of event number six inside the Coliseum. What a great test they've had. A lot of moving parts in this one again in the Coliseum. But teamwork and communication, absolute key. Relying on your strengths. If you have some people that can take some more of the brunt of the calorie or of the, of the handstand push-ups or the holds, you just do where you can, what you can, and work together.
very proud to see that Aussie flag as a heat winner as well. Two of them in that heat. Urban Energy finishes eighth. Not to be confused with eighth day CrossFit, they finished ninth. OBA did run into some struggles. They wind up because of tiebreakers in fifth, but completing the third most work of the event. One point. Overall standings in the team event, right where Mayhem Freedom would have told you they'd be. CrossFit Mayhem Freedom, first place, 452 points, and for the second time in this competition, Froning and Friends will be wearing the white leader's jersey with the red bottoms. Invictus, we've said it once, we'll say it again, the only affiliate with a team in every team competition, just off pace by six points. Mayhem earlier today, boy, this was domination. I tell you what, we spoke about this earlier with poking the bear. And Froning had that look in his eye coming into today. And they left no doubt. And that walk to the finish, the struts. Mayhem, freedom, they are back and back with a vengeance. It was their first event with win so far. And they're going to roll in with that momentum. Handstand Machine, team event number six. Two rounds for time, 40 echo bike calories for the men, 15 block handstand push-ups for the women. 34, the women back on the echo bike, and the men will move to 20 handstand push-ups. Then 500 meters each on the row, while the other gender pairing holds a handstand hold. We have two rounds for time and an 18-minute time cap. The recipe for success for this event is all about those handstand push-ups, being cautiously confident, and then once you get to the back half of the event, with the handstand holds, making sure that your awareness and your timing is spot on with your partner. Land assignments here in this final heat with the time to beat, 17.03. Pro One has bumped their way into the fourth heat. They're in lane one, CrossFit Omnia out of Colorado is in lane 10. Invictus out of San Diego, right in the middle of the floor, trying to crack their way into a white leader's jersey for the first time this season, chasing down Megan. This entire event starts with 40 cows on the bike and for the ladies, 15 of these block handstand push-ups. The new element that we've seen, these athletes have all had a chance to watch three previous heats to kind of get an idea. They play with these ballistic blocks back in the warm-up area. And so now it's just executing your strategy. How many are you going to do? How many am I going to do? They'll have about two minutes to do that while the men are working on their calories on the Echo Bike. We spoke about Invictus just before, but coming into this event number six with a fifth, second, fifth, seventh, fourth, what a great start to competition, even though there is a fair bit of work to go over the next couple of days. Well, for all of Freedom's dominance, it's really been Invictus who have had the most consistency so far at this part and this point into the, the games. Second place, they actually won the CrossFit Games back in 2014. That was the last time they took the Affiliate Cup. And so no strangers, they have been here every single year. The only affiliate to send a team every single year. Actually, if you look at the guys' jerseys, you can see it really distinctly against Joshua Alshama's black jersey top. That little gold number above CrossFit, that is the winning tag from that championship. There aren't a whole lot of teams that have that on their jersey. Mayhem's is littered with it, but it's that stark reminder of, hey, we're Invictus, don't forget about us. Absolutely not. And I remember back a couple of years ago, Joel 2018, when we were both commentating in the team division, and Devin Kim was in that division as well. Great to see the progression. And Kim is just one of two teams to compete in all four of those games as a teenager. So a lot of competition experience on Invictus's side. CJ Martin, the owner and their coach, he has trained many teams to get here. Oh, by the way, look who's in first place. The bear was poked in event five. Mayhem Freedom woke up, but let's not count out Oslo Navy Blue. They are in first place. They would like that white shirt back from Rich Foreman. Well, are they the polar bears? <laughs> back and forth. It's been a great battle. Oslo Navy Blue and Mayhem Freedom swapping the white jersey in and out. Well, don't leave out CrossFit Reykjavik. Coming into this event in fifth place, we 
wondered how Lauren Shoulder's gonna hold up with the handstand push-ups, knowing Annie's strength, knowing that her teammate's strength. That'll be the question here once we switch. Lauren Fisher on the right does not have any kinetic tape on her shoulder, which she did wear during the ring muscle-ups this morning. If they're in first place right now, they were able to make it quickly through there. And now look at Tola. Tola Moore and Kenya would, would wow. like more weight on their deficit handstand push-ups. Why don't you slap a weight vest on him to just even things out for the rest of the field? This event is presented by Monster Energy Hydro, the official energy drink of the No Bull CrossFit game. I was excited to see Khan and Tola hit the Echo Bike, but how about those handstands from Tola? That was dumb. <laughs> you got to be was so stupid. <laughs> uh, make the transition. Tom Porter, Tullamore, and Kenyo rowing center of screen. You've got Oslo Navy Blue right of screen. Now, if you want two guys on a rower that are going to chew through meters quickly, these are two of the athletes you want. Khan Porter, you legend. So many years of experience at CrossFit Regional, Sanctional, and Semi-Finals in the Oceania region. And in great shape after spending so much time in Iceland training with these three other absolute weapons. So in sync on this row. Con Porter with the wandering eyes trying to check where everybody else is in the field. So with Tolomora Keno. Reykjavik entered in fifth place overall, trying to hunt down a podium spot. Questions we talked about already with Lauren Fisher's shoulder. How would it hold up? She and Annie Thoris' daughter doing the handstand holds, and Lauren Fisher just did a very, very quick one to give Annie Thoris' daughter a brief respite, but you can see three lanes from the top, Iceland Annie is back holding a handstand again. This is going to be a very, you have to imagine, work uh, work workload heavy workout for Annie Thoris' daughter. And again, Lauren Fisher kicks up. Annie is shaking out her arms, but is immediately ready to go again. But if you're coming into an event like this and you want to protect someone with a shoulder niggle, that's exactly how you're going to communicate and swap in and out. Taylor Williamson up. Spells Andrea Nistler for Mayhem Freedom. <laughs> Reykjavik switches. Annie Thoris' daughter's team took a 30th place finish in the Coliseum on Wednesday night. And they have bounced back with fuel. Now they might be out of it for a first place hunt at this point. Maybe some 70 points out of first place contention. It's a lot of points to make up. But they are going to fight for a podium spot with still a lot of work to do this weekend. Just joining us, these rowers are connected on sliders, so it mimics what it would be like to row on water, just like you were on a crew team. And they've been around for about 20 years. We've talked to some of the guys down at Concept 2. This is a great way to train so that you, when you get back on water, are in sync and your timing is perfect so they can work with some of their crew members that may not be doing as well to kind of get that timing together with your teammates. Really interesting there. Khan Porter, the far right of your screen. Now Tola Marqueño is up on his hands, but Khan was sideways to kind of watch each other and kind of see where they were at. I think he might have wound up turning. May have just <laughs> turned accidentally. Thought it was a strategy. <laughs> Could Sam Cornoyer be any stoic, more stoic? Freedom is now back out in front. Rich Froning will kick up, Cornoyer down. Well, it is very um, common to see Freedom come back. Maybe sometimes, look, we saw him smash and just demolish today's event, but sometimes we see their pacing pay off in later rounds. We have another round of this to go. Reykjavik. Reykjavik is just smashing this one. And Oslo's right behind them. Here comes Freedom. 
You wanted to fight, you got to fight. Well, this one is a race, and when we talked to Adrian Bosman earlier, he said the skilled and the fit were going to be fast through this, and not skilled, not fit, they're going to get stuck. Well, these are three of the fittest teams here, and they're moving fast. Coming into the second round of Handstand Machine, two rounds. This is the second of those. 40 Echo by Calories. Khan and Tola on the far left of the screen. Number one starting things off with the 15 block handstand push-ups for the females then. They will switch 30 Echo by Calories for the females and 20 block handstands for the men. 500 meters on the row to finish off and are we going to see another fast time and more teams finishing this event? I think so at this rate. No luxury of time now, you have to push the pace, push the envelope here. You know what it felt like the first half and now we just got to do it again, but this is the games. This is the top three teams, actually we have to check where Invictus is. Here. The only one of sixth place right now in the heat. This heat here that we're missing out of the top teams in this race. Oslo Navy Blue is in third overall, but it leads the heat. Mayhem on your screen is in first overall. It's second in the heat. Invictus is dead center in the black tops, the women in the black bottoms. The women for Mayhem Freedom on the left of screen hitting the bike. 30 cows for both Andrea Nistler and Taylor Williamson. A round of applause was for Reykjavik now also making the switch. At this juncture, guys, you're tired, you're on round two. What's the pace that these men and women are pushing on this bike? I mean, they, if you're giving it all that you have, you are crushed. The, the Echo Bike is really, it's a very common element for all of the athletes. They know how to push and how to grind on this. They have to just close your eyes and know this is like the training that they train for. And just dig in. I think that's what Ingrid Hodemir is doing. She was just looking down, putting her head down for Oslo, putting it out. If this one joins, we're about making sure you're with your heart rate. You have to be done at the same time. You don't see the one for the next team. Lane three is Reykjavik. Lane four is Oslo. Lane five is Mayhem Freedom. Lane two is Selwyn. We did expect to do a really good job on the handstand push-ups, especially Luke Fowler, who was about to kick up on that wall. He's just changing out with his brother, Ben. Jeremy, he did 90 handstand push-ups all by his lonesome semifinals, is that right? Torian, him. Torian Pro, yes, but they were all strict. So you could do a keeping handstand push-up. He decided he was going to go 90 strict. Yeah, why not? So Ben Fowler did zero handstand push-ups in the team event. I will say this, they have merch spot on. Best fan base out there, the whole crew supporting, cheering him on, Rich's family, his kids. Well, four events in, CrossFit Mayhem hadn't won. They won running away in the fifth event by almost three minutes. They've got company from Reykjavik, but they're out in front. Real calm roll from Froning and Cornoyer. And now here comes Oslo. Oslo Navy Blue rounding out your top three. It goes one. Oslo Navy Blue now on the roller. Second to Mayhem Freedom last year here in Madison. Oslo Navy Blue. Coming up on the 12 minute mark, six minutes left to go. Only four teams have finished through three heats. We're going to get four teams at least that finish in this year. Love the curious eyes of Froning. <laughs> Trying to read the oh, ways. Go being always looking. What's everyone else doing? Composure. It's almost effortless for Rich Froning. So many years of it, so much experience. 
And that's what you get when you're led by him. The whole team gets to think through the process of where to stay composed. He will talk through him. It's a two-round event where you make your moves. You don't want to go too early. You just have to be clean. You have to be smart in this whole thing. Execution is where they just excel. We have only showed you throwing in Koto. They have not stopped throwing. 41, that's quick. Keep in the back of your mind, and that means that Nistler and Williamson have been beautiful in their communication. For a minute and 48 seconds, somebody who had a handstand for Mayhem Freedom. Flawless execution. And the ladies wasted no time. They got right on. Great transition there. Two women that used to compete against Mayhem Free. Andrea Nisler, Taylor Williamson, were on OC3 out of Iowa. Couldn't get over the hump. Couldn't beat Mayhem Freedom. This little joke last year. She felt like she was joining the dark side. They won their first affiliate cup and CrossFit Games championship between the two of them. 136, now 137. That is a ridiculous speed to be going for this 500. They are trashing this final row. When you are Rich Froning, you go get the best. He found it here. He said it earlier this season, I have the best two women in the field. I have the best on my team. They're showing it right here. This is also another thing that you can replicate in your affiliate. 80% effort for 80% of the workout. We are in the last 20%. All out. Expectation from Rich Froning. He sets the standard, but his expectations are so high from his teammates, and they are absolutely delivering right now. Oh, look at the handstand hold position. Rich wanting a little bit of love, too, and he's getting it. The time to beat is 17.03. You gotta be kidding me. 50 meters away. Mayhem is gonna smash the field by two whole minutes. Now they'll get company in this heat. But for the second event in a row, Mayhem Freedom! Hear them roar! Leaders jerseys going into the weekend. were the first to the finish line, but Hordenmir and Richter got across first for Oslo. A female had to have the chip timer, and Oslo with critical points in this race for the podium. So three points in that split second finish. Oslo, Navi Blue, and Reykjavik. Great results for Reykjavik. They'll move up again. That's a 25-second win for me. That's been outstanding. Their last two events have been out of control. They are on a mission on Friday. By the way, there's still two minutes left, so <laughs> feel free to continue working if you're out there. Look at this race again. A little replay here just to show you the foot chip. Looks like Liana Richter has it for Oslo, and Thora's daughter had it for Reykjavik. She reached, and he made the reach as far as she could. She tried, she just couldn't get in. And that's one of those little no! things, right? Be aware of where the chip timer is on your closest competition. He did the best she could there. Mayhem Independence. Independence. Flying under the radar. <laughs> Look at these guys. Selwyn, Independence. Independence has been there, right there, right on the heels where Freedom finishes. They're right behind them. Shall we say mustache mayhem? <laughs> we could say that. Between Parker and Chico. <laughs> 
Waiting for another finisher here. Stockwin also across, so five teams have come to a close. Invictus is still out there on the floor, and these are critical points that are now going past because we have now passed teams from prior heats. Remember, Invictus was in second place overall coming in. You mentioned Selwyn, and they made a few mistakes at the Torian Pro into that qualifying position in second spot, but only just. They said they weren't going to make mistakes again, and they are going very well. The New Zealand team from Christchurch been absolutely outstanding in the first couple of days of competition. Really good work by Al Shama. He's got a dance background, very elegant in his gymnastics. Invictus is done, and Invictus has time to finish. So the sea of green comes across, 17.53, 10th in the event. That will drop them out of second place overall, but they do finish the work here in event number six. The teams are done until Saturday. Rich Froning is <laughs> just getting started. Rich Froning Friday. Mayhem, what a statement in events five and six. And is that a glint of a smile or is he still they head have, down? They, <laughs> I'll tell you what, Mayhem, Freedom's patience, their confidence and their abilities while the rest of the field was just smashing. Tolomarquino just hammering his handstands, Reykjavik's speed in their transitions through the first round of this event. It didn't fluster Freedom. Freedom made their move on the back half of this event in round two. Once the guys got to the rower, Mayhem was the first to get there. They didn't look back. They had nobody with them through that final row. They knew it. They had a perfect row, perfect handstand hold. Never had to stop on those rowers. Those ladies did their job on the rower. Perfect day three for Mayhem Freedom. Stop me if you've heard this before. Jamie is with Mayhem. You were briefed on this event this morning when they announced that the Hanson pushes would be wall facing, strict deficit, and a Hanson hold during that row. What were your initial thoughts? I mean, yeah, confusion. Uh, <laughs> I think everyone was surprised, but it uh, turns out pretty well for us. Uh, it was a nice workout, actually, even if the Hanson suck a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. The rowing is something we're not typically used to seeing. How is that different being on slides versus a static rower? Uh, we both kind of had to change our cadences to match each other, so that was a little weird. Uh, basically, we just gripped it and ripped it. In such a close race, does that change your strategy at all when you see how tight of a race it is between the other teams? Yeah, absolutely. You just think, man, I can't mess up. <laughs> There's no room for error. No room for error. And Rich, a perfect day, 200 points, two event wins. We saw how pumped you guys were crossing that line. What does that say about this team? Oh, this team's awesome. It's fun. Um, they all like to hurt and they all like to win. So what more could you want? Congratulations. Well, Rich Froning literally couldn't have done any better here on Friday. Mayhem Freedom wins both events, five and six. Navy Blue did the best it could. Finishes second, it beats Reykjavik by two tenths, right, tenths? That's the first decimal? First decimal. Reykjavik comes in third. <laughs> Those are the overall team standings now. The lead grows for Mayhem Freedom. They were up by six. We'll go down onto the floor now for the introduction of our next event. All right, everybody, if you could please turn your attention to the Jumbotron, we have an announcement regarding tomorrow's first event for our teams and individuals. It's time to get wet. Go. The all division test for the 2022 CrossFit Games is rinse and repeat. All athletes will start on the pool deck and swim 25 yards out and 25 yards back. Then on the first round, you'll ski eight calories. On the second round, you'll swim and then ski 10 calories. On the third round, 12 calories. On the fourth round, 14 calories. On the fifth round, 16 calories. On the sixth round, 18 calories. And if you make it that far, on the seventh round, it's a max calorie opportunity, followed by an eighth round of another max 
effort opportunity. Each round has a two minute time cap. If you do not complete the work inside the two minute time cap, you do not advance to the next round. Max Calories wins.